So we've gone over cleaning your computer, cleaning your monitor, and cleaning your keyboard. But what's something that you typically have in your hands for the longest period of time? It's either gonna be your mouse or your controller. And those can get pretty grimy. Hey, what's up everyone, Kadak here. And today we're gonna go over how to clean your mouse and your controller. I will leave chapters down below so that if you only wanna clean one of them, you can instantly skip to one and view how to do it. Now, cleaning your mouse and your controller is pretty straightforward compared to com cleaning your computer or cleaning your keyboard. Um, there's a lot less components to a mouse or a controller and it's a lot easier to get to everything. So this is a pretty straightforward thing to do. We'll go over, we'll use our favorite things, our microfiber cloth, our air duster, and a few extra tools like a toothpick, uh, a Q-tip, some isopropyl alcohol, and a few other things as well. Cleaning a standard style mouse is quite easy. Take your microfiber cloth while it's dry, and if it's wireless, turn your mouse off. Give it a good, give it a good wipe down. Um, try to get as much of that like dust and stuff off as possible. Now, once that's done, your mouse can look pretty clean. Um, but what you can do now is take your microfiber cloth. Um, you can put a little bit of IPA on it if you want. Um, you can use an alcoholic wipe if you want. Make sure it doesn't have a lot of additives in there or else it can leave a bit of a residue. Or you can go ahead and um, take your microfiber cloth, some water with some very diluted soap in there, dip it. And just like I would do with my monitor, you wanna make sure that it's as squished out as possible. You wanna wring it out so that it's not dripping wet when you use it on your mouse. So quite different now. And then we're just gonna give our mouse a quick wipe down. You wanna avoid getting any kind of moisture into a battery compartment if it's a wireless mouse. Um, you want to try to avoid getting any kind of moisture on the sensor, um, but because I wring this out quite a bit, it's not really leaving any wetness anywhere, which is good. And just give it a good quick wipe. And there we go. So this mouse is quite a bit cleaner than it was before. And that's how I suggest you clean a standard mouse. Now, if you have one of these ultra lightweight mice like I have, first thing I typically do is I will take um, the toothpick. So I'll take a toothpick and I will try to get into all of these little hexagonal spots and try to loosen up the dirt with the toothpick. There are certain spots that seem to hold uh, dirt a little bit more than others, but this is just a really good way to loosen up that dirt and um, make things a little bit easier for our next steps. Now, certain spots like up here, uh, there's not really any dirt sitting in there, so I don't really have to worry. And on the bottom, it's actually pretty clean considering how much I use this mouse. Uh, a lot of it seems for me seems to be on the back end here. So once you go ahead and loosen up all that dirt with the toothpick, you can go ahead and grab your compressed air and give it a few spots of air. You can use it again over like a garbage can or a bathtub or something. Um, mine's not that dirty, so I'm not gonna worry too much about it. And um, I'm gonna turn down the volume for this. And that actually looks pretty good. And again, we're gonna take our already damp microfiber cloth from the last mouse, and we're just gonna give it a good wipe. And there we go. 
the mice are very quick to do. They're quite a bit easier to do as well. Um, but I feel like mice and keyboards are usually the dirtiest, um, especially if you're if you have sweaty hands like I do. They get pretty dirty pretty easily. So this does help a lot. And you know, I basically just give these a wipe down every once in a while. Um, you, you know, usually maybe every once or uh, once or twice a month. Um, it takes no time to quickly damp one of these down and give them a wipe. And then when you want to do a more thorough clean, you can do those every once in a while. But this takes no time at all. And I'll usually clean these and my monitors all at the same time. All right, so for a controller, um, things can be pretty simple. Um, it really depends. Look, nice thing about my Elite controller here is I can actually take the thumbsticks off, which makes cleaning one hell of a lot easier. We're gonna bring back our old friend, the damp microfiber cloth, the toothpicks, and the Q-tips with the IPA. So I'm gonna put the IPA back in the cap here. There we go. And first things first, we're just gonna take our cloth. Um, if your com controller is very dusty, give it a quick dusting first with the dry side of the cloth. So we'll do that. Get all that surface dust off there. And now with the wet side of the cloth, I'm gonna go and give it a quick little wipe down. You'll notice that like, especially if you have a black controller around your buttons, if you, again, if you have oily hands, sweaty hands like I do, you'll notice that there will be a little bit of oil left on there. So this helps really clean that off. You can get into your thumbsticks area here. Now, if you have the thumbstick on, this is a little bit more difficult with the cloth, um, but you can still usually, you know, get under there with the cloth and try to give that a good clean. A lot of grime gets in this little spot here. So try your best to clean that out. Now, if you have anything that's really, really sticking there, you can dip um, a cloth into some IPA and get in there. But honestly, with the water and the distilled soap, it gets very, very clean. Um, this is, you know, pretty, pretty good. And now what we're going to do is we're going to get into the nook and cranny. So with controllers, you'll have a lot of these seams here. And if you do have a buildup on the seams, you grab your toothpick and you can run your toothpick through that little seam and loosen up any of that grime. And then you can blow it off with the compressed air or use your cloth. So my controller is actually in pretty good condition. I clean this one relatively often. The only thing that it really gets is dusty. Um, but other than that, the, the seams are pretty good. So I don't have to use this too much on um, the standard plastic controllers. Let me see if I have one. So on the standard plastic controllers, the seams here are not rubberized like they are on the Elite controller. So there is a little bit more grime in here. Honestly, this is probably the worst controller I could have grabbed. The white is very difficult for my phone to grab here. Let me try, try to find one of the other ones. All right, so we've got one of our other controllers here and you might be able to see a little bit of grime in the clamshell here. So that's where the toothpick comes in handy. You just run your toothpick through there and you'll see all of that little bit of grime coming out of there. Uh, and this is what the toothpick is really good for. And I just go ahead and grab my cloth and I wipe that away and significantly cleaner. Um, honestly, super helpful. What I typically use the Q-tips for is to get into spots where the microfiber cloth really couldn't get into. So if you feel like you weren't really able to get under your thumbsticks enough, um, you can use the Q-tip there. But what I use it most for is actually the thumbsticks themselves. So if you can see, Inside the thumbstick can get pretty grimy. Um, it, it's just from having, you know, dirty hands, eating while I'm playing, stuff like that. So I'll usually take my Q-tip, dip it in the IPA, squeeze it out with my finger, and then just give it a good swirl inside. And 
and it cleans really, really well. Now I'll go ahead and I'll take my cloth and I'll wipe off any of that grimy stuff that sat on the surface. And then I'll go and get it again. And wipe that down. So that thumbstick is now grime free. Very, very simple. Um, this is usually what I end up cleaning the most. Um, I do the same on my elite ones. The nice thing is I can take these off so they're a lot easier to clean and I can just hold it in my hand and give it a good clean. Um, I wouldn't, um, you know, throw these in hot water or anything. I wouldn't want any of the adhesives to fall apart. So that's why I typically use the IPA. Um, and yeah, they clean up very easily. This is, my friends used to make fun of me for cleaning all my thumbsticks this way. But if your friend has ever handed you a controller and it's kind of grimy, it's kind of gross. Um, so this significantly helps with that. And it makes cleaning the controllers quite a bit easier. Now what I typically do is um, on Xbox controllers, you can take the battery compartment out. So I do take that out. And I'll usually, um, I won't clean anything in here, um, but I'll usually give it a quick wipe with the dry side of the microfiber, just in case there's a lot of dust in there. And then yeah, just go around the whole controller with the damp side. And give it a good quick clean and controllers are done. And that's it. Cleaning your mouse and your controller is a very quick process. Um, I highly suggest you do it, you know, relatively often, especially since they are things that you are probably touching the most out of everything on your system. And because they're so quick to clean, um, you could do it very, very easily. Like I would typically clean my mice and my monitors all at the same time. And I'll usually do that maybe like once a month. It'll take me less than five minutes. I get some water on my microfiber cloth. I'll wipe down my monitors. I'll wipe down my mice. And then if the mice have a little bit of extra grime on it, I'll do that diluted soap, but I typically don't have to even go that route. I can typically just do it with the wet microfiber cloth and it cleans up really, really well. If you ended up finding this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you liked, subscribed. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below and I will try to get to them all as quickly as possible. As always, I stream on Twitch from Friday until Tuesday. Come check me out and say hello. And if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to ask me while I'm live streaming. Thanks again for watching the end of the video. Stay safe out there and I'll see you next Friday.